Hello, I'm Jack from the Fantasy Wildcard Derby Show, and you are listening to the Dynasty Hot Seat. Yes, hello everybody, and welcome back once again to the Dynasty Hot Seat, the only Dynasty show out there that is a certified inferno. And we are back after a lovely summer hiatus away from the show. I'm raring to go, and I couldn't have asked for a better guest. It's the best one from the Wild Card Devi show. It's Jack. Jack, back on the show again. We're obviously doing a little bit different than the last time we talked about all these rookies. We're doing some AFC West deal or no deal fun action today. How are you doing, mate? Good to see you. I am very well, and thank you for such a glorious introduction. I don't think I've ever been so complimented. Certainly not <laughs> this time of uh, this side of the summer holidays. So I'm good. I'm excited to talk some AFC East and uh, dive into maybe the other teams that aren't my very own Patriots because there's a bit more. Sunshine and rainbows elsewhere. Yeah, there's there's a lot of sunshine and rainbows in a, in a lot of places, but yeah, some some less some less uh, less sunshine, more more storm clouds in other places. But we'll we'll get to that real soon. And just welcome back everybody, and of course welcome to new viewers and listeners as well. If you're over on YouTube, hey, try hitting that like and that subscribe button. I guarantee you won't regret it. And hey, it's free, right? Can't ask for anything better than that. It's free, doesn't cost you a damn thing. So let's roll into it. Deal or no deal? Everyone knows how that works, right? Surely, Jack, everyone knows how it works. There are 22 boxes here. Behind those boxes is not numbers. It's not money. Instead, it's players that belong to these AFC East teams. So that is the Bills, the Dolphins, the Jets, and of course, your beloved New England Patriots. We've got five players from each team. And I've thrown in some sneaky draft picks as well. We got an early 2024 first, and we have a late 2027 fourth as well, just to throw it in there. You'll open up a few boxes. After round one, you'll get an offer from the mysterious banker, whoever whoever that may be. We still still don't know. Rumor circling, it's Kev White, but you know, it's un- unfounded, Jack. And then we'll see if you accept or deny that. And we'll keep rolling from there, just like the show in real life. But Jack, we can't start before you choose a box that you're going to have as, you know, your box. Maybe there's a lucky number you have. Maybe you're just going to pick one at random. What box are you going to choose? And and tell us why as well. Yeah, I'm going to pick box number 16 because it is the number of my favorite Ohio State players. I'm a big college fan, obviously helping do the Wildcard Debbie show. JT Barrett was the quarterback of the Ohio State Buckeyes when I first started watching college football, and and I'm going to stick with his number right now. Number 16, locked in. I can't believe he didn't go with 12. The Patriots fan not going with a, with a 12? I mean, wow, 16. How good was JT Barrett have been, right, to, to over overrule even the great Tom Brady? So we got 16, locked in. Jack? Let's take it away. You got to open some boxes now. You're opening up five boxes. Here's who's available, though, right? Just so the audience know and you know what's at stake here. The main prize, as I'm sure you're well aware, is Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills. He is there in this super flex format that we got here. Also from the Buffalo Bills, you've got James Cook. You've got Keon Coleman. You have got... You've got Mitchell Trubisky in there as well from the Bills, just to keep things live. And, and of course, you know, whenever I said earlier that Josh Allen was the main prize, I lied. The main prize is really Dalton Kincaid, the tight end of the Buffalo Bills, who is also available there. From the Dolphins, you've got Tua Tonga Viola, you've got Tyreek Hill, you've got Devin Achan, you got Jalen Wright, and you got Jonu Smith as well from the Dolphins. From the New York Jets, you got Aaron Rodgers. You have got 
Wilson, Lazard, Brees Hall, and Tyler Conklin there too. But of course, what you really want is some of your beloved Pats players, right? Drake Mays there, Ramondre Stevenson, then you've got Baker, Hunter Henry, and I had to put Joe Milton in there as well, Jack, just to keep things interesting, right? So those are the players on offer. Let's open some boxes, will we, Jack? Where are you going? Let's start with that Tom Brady number 12. You put me to shame by not picking him. So let's hope that I made the right decision early doors. Yeah, let's see what would have been behind box number 12. Hey, it was Aaron Rodgers. We should have guessed it would have been Aaron Rodgers behind there actually as well, right? What? Yeah, the other 12. The other 12. Uh, What's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers this year? Do you think he's going to see more than four snaps? <laughs> oh, I, I hope so for fantasy and for entertainment value. I think the Jets fans out there, that I think we all know at least one or two who deserve something a little bit more than what they got. The hope was there and the uh, appreciate injury was also there. So, yeah, I think we're going to see hopefully a lot more of Aaron Rodgers and we all hope from a dynasty, dynasty perspective that that will have an impact on his weapons, his wide receivers, his running back, his tight end that we've seen at Green Bay for, for decades. Do you think uh, do you think this is his last year? Or it's, it's kind of hard to tell with a guy at Rodgers, right? I don't think we'll ever know for sure. I can feel like everything is kept, his cars are kept close to his chest all the time with some yeah. cryptic messages sent out there so i don't think we'll know until maybe three or four years after he's retired because he's got that comeback ability just like brady did he fooled us all yeah um, yep yeah. i guess part on. i think that's a that's part i'm definitely it. treating him as a one-year short-term option yeah. in dynasty but uh hoping anything else is a bonus yeah, absolutely agree with you there. So we got Rogers. What an ideal start, Jack. One of the one of the lower rated players on this board. So let's keep this form going. Where are you going next? I'm gonna half that twelve. Let's try at number six. Number six. Ooh, Tyreek Hill coming off the board. He's one of the more interesting guys to value in Dynasty right now because. He's another one where people are like, is it one more year? Is it two more years? He said he was going to retire and become a porn star, but now he's maybe pedaling back on some of that. What? How do you rank a guy like Tyreek Hill, and how good is he, even if it is just a one-year rental? Yeah, I think this is the year where it's more of a tipping point for me than the last two or three years. We've known this for at least a year that he was considering retiring at a relatively young age, and and two years of Tyreek Hill is enough for me to not really worry about it and and rank him as a top five wide receiver in Dynasty still. This year, he's obviously still right at the top of everybody's redraft rankings, but in Dynasty, if I'm not competing right now, then I, I, I don't know why I've still got Tyreek Hill on my roster, but he's someone that I am trying to cash in on at this point. He's still very valuable. He's, you know, as soon as we see him catching passes from hopefully to her, then his value is going to increase again. You can definitely get out of him if you need to. And he, he is still very valuable. Do you think there's anything to, like, uh, recently he was voted by his peers the number one player in the NFL that we all see in the NFL top 100, which amazingly Aaron Rodgers was also on, right? <laughs> um, do you think People know something we don't. Do you think this is maybe going to be his last year and that's why people voted for him? Or I know he had a good year as well, but it's that that seemed odd to me, right? I was like, how did that happen? Yeah, I, I think people are maybe trusting his word and, and saying that he's going he's gonna to pack it in at the end of the season. He seems like someone who would love to go out at the very top of the game as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think he's someone who's going to want to fade away into the limelight. He's got his restructured contract so he's still amongst the top paid wide receivers in the league yeah i think that's how i want to be remembered yeah absolutely but hey kids aren't cheap either so maybe he does stick around for for a bit longer but tyreek hill coming off the board where are we going next 
Let's go right to the top. We'll go 22. Tick off the corners on this board. Yeah, let's take these corners away. 22. That's a great, great pick. Tyler Conklin coming off the board. Unbelievably, right? Tyler Conklin, though, still available on some waiver wires at the moment. I think he's worth a pickup, surely, right? I think he's definitely a valuable player this year. Aaron Rodgers has shown favoritism to his tight ends. I was, look at, I was looking at some of the statistics of what, you know, what a Green Bay wide receiver two traditionally gets as a target share, and it's less than the tight end and it's less than the running back. So hmm. uh, for for the Jets' hopes this season, I would hope that Tyler Conklin isn't as involved as that, but he's hmm. definitely on an island there as well. There's no competition really at the tight end position for Conklin. And if he's still a waiver wire, if he's, if he's absolutely free, he's he's definitely going to be a better option than somebody that's on your bench. Yeah, absolutely agree. So he's someone yeah, I've got. If you're in the league with me, he's not in the waiver wire. I, I I managed to snap him up in most places. But if you're not in a league with me, go go check him out. You might be able to pick up Conklin for free. A good ad from the waiver wire for sure. And with these tight ends, you never know. He could Tyler Conklin could be tight end ten on the year, genuinely. And and. We just don't know. He could be tight end 30 as well. That's so close between those. You just don't know. It's worth it's worth a shot. And yeah, if you pick him up for free, you can always drop him later as well. So we're off to a, we're off to a great start, I think, here. Hill isn't perfect, but Jack, we're, we're rolling quite well. So where are you going next on these picks? Okay, let's go. Another Patriots legend, Julian Edelman, number 11. Take that off the board for me. Let's see. Who's behind number 11? You are absolutely crushing this i have to say johnny smith coming off the board what <laughs> what do you reckon about johnny smith he's a kind of guy that he's every now and again you'll see on twitter some kind of hype about him for me he's he's worth nothing i'm not paying even a fourth round pick for johnny smith are you no i'm not and i've seen too close to home the <laughs> downfall of Johnny Smith. You know, when the Patriots yeah. signed into that contract, it was really exciting. The double team of Smith and Hunter Henry was going to yep. be the 12 personnel glory that led the Patriots back into uh, Super Bowl contention, and it just it just didn't happen. So, like you say, we've seen a little bit of hype on X about his usage at the Dolphins a couple of weeks yep. ago how that might be valuable in Dynasty. I don't agree. I don't think that he's going to provide any kind of value for your fantasy team this year. And yeah. if he does, just snap him off off the waiver wire. I don't, don't, don't trade for him. Yeah, um, I'm absolutely agreeing with you there as well. So that is a great, great pick. Let's round off this awesome first round, shall we, Jack? And if you smash it again, I reckon you got a juicy offer from the banker coming. So where are we going? Let's tick off number 18 from the bottom Let's left see. number 18 take another corner away Keon Coleman coming off the board he is an interesting guy right Coleman came in with a lot of hype and then the hype kind of dulled down and it's kind of going down and down and down the last couple of weeks as well what what do you think about Keon Coleman did you like him coming out of Florida State yeah, well, I remember we spoke about him a little bit because we were very much on the same page when we assessed him as a prospect, someone who was getting a bit of hype that we were a little bit confused about. Why was he so highly sought after before yeah. the draft? And then the landing spot and the draft capital obviously changed the picture a little bit. So Keon Coleman's value got a boost for, for everybody. I think like personally, he went up in my rankings because just taking into consideration that draft capital in particular was was really important. So I, I didn't love him as a prospect, but he doesn't have loads of competition. He, it, there's a route there for him to be probably not Josh Allen's number one target because of Dalton Kincaid and what kind of an athletic prospect he is, but to be the maybe 1B in that offense, certainly the, the number one wide receiver. So I'm surprised to see the hype dying down over the last few weeks. I think 
we can react quite quickly to uh, a 30 second clip or the leave that three 30 seconds a 10 second clip out of training camp so we're maybe we're just one of those away from declaring him as the best rookie in this class again <laughs> yeah absolutely it doesn't take much this time of year does it so that is the end of this one let's see if we get a oh we do we do have a we do have a call from the biker yes hello there is a lot a lot on the board you're right josh allen tua a chan yep garrett wilson yeah king Heard, yeah all right Jack, the banker says the last thing that he wants is anyone to walk away with Josh Allen here because that would be a huge loss. And the, the banker's been been winning real well these last couple of episodes. So the banker wants to get you out of here in round one, giving you a real interesting offer for box number 16. Banker's offering you JJ McCarthy. What do you think about that? Oh, what? A roller coaster of uh, journey JJ McCarthy has been on, and his value yeah. for that. Right. Someone, someone similar to Keon Coleman. I didn't love the prospect. Now, a lot of that has been covered because we've not seen everything because he wasn't asked to do everything at Michigan, mm -hmm. and then he gets incredible draft capital, going to a wonderful landing spot with a great head coach at Minnesota, and then suddenly. He's just gone for the season. It felt like that injury came out of nowhere, like the surgery and suddenly the layoff. Yeah, it was a complete surprise. I think I was, I think I was was on holiday, had my phone in the apartment, came back from the beach, and everything's moved so quickly, and and he's gone. So I don't know what to think of JJ McCarthy now. I don't know. I can't profess to be someone who knows that much about the kind of injury. That he's yeah. had and the that he's had so it seems like everyone's expecting a full recovery but a full season out isn't ideal agreed so that's what i think that's what the the banker is thinking this would be an interesting offer i mean it's weird like the entry doesn't change a huge amount for me personally because i wouldn't have been shocked either if the Vikings come out and said, look, JJ McCarthy's going to sit for a year. We're going to play Sam Darnold and McCarthy's not going to see the field. But just because it was kind of taken out of his hands, it's a bigger knock on him. And it, I know it's the injury as well that obviously doesn't help. But yeah, it, you're right. Roller coaster is a, is a great way to describe it. So Jack, with all that in mind, I've got to ask you, JJ McCarthy, deal or no deal? I could not go out in public if I took the first offer on a Michigan player. So it is a ah. no. Yeah. And I feel like that I was an antagonistic so... offer from <laughs> the banker, mysterious banker. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's almost like the banker knew you were Ohio State fan as well. It's all it's all very confusing as to the identity of him. You're right, Jack. So let's let's move along then to round number two. Five more boxes that we're going to open here. This this is going so well so far. Let's keep it rolling. Where are we going first? We'll go big boy in the center of the formation. Let's take out number eight. Number eight in the center. That is, oh, it's a big one. That's a big one. Brees Hall coming off the board. Obviously would have loved to have got him. Is Brees Hall your dynasty running back one, Jack, or how far away is he? He is, I, I mean, tied with Bijan Robinson or maybe just slightly behind for me, I think. Yeah. But Bruce Hall is a wonderful running back and a true workhorse in, a, in an NFL that doesn't have very many of them. So as a dynasty asset, that is excellent. That's everything you want. And he's shown that he's okay off the back of his injury. He's shown that he yeah. can deliver in, in the season just gone. So... He's very close to running back one. I have no qualms or issues with anybody that has him ranked as their number one running back. Do you have any any concerns? Have you talked about Aaron Rodgers earlier and how much he targets different people? I expect Brees Hall is is that good that we'll see him get a lot of targets regardless of Rodgers' like history of throwing to running backs. Yeah, he he's still gonna see his his fair share of targets, right? Yeah, I think so. I think he's shown that he has the skills and the hands to earn those targets. He's 
he's, he's not going to be giving them. He's already earned them. He's earned the respect yeah. of his coordinator. And I think Aaron Rodgers will be on board with a, a safe guy like Brees Hall. Yep. I'm a hundred percent with you there, but that's not a name we wanted to see Jack. So let's, let's write the ship here. Where, where are we going next? Let's, let's get, uh, let's get a Joe Milton or that fourth round pick or something like that. Right. Okay, let's try and get Joe Milton with the deep throw to the left corner in number one and see if let's that see. Let's... Well, let's see if we can find... Oh, we didn't find Joe, but we did find the 2027 late fourth round pick. Jack, you're the... How deep do your Debbie branches go? Can you tell me anything about the fourth round in 2027? <laughs> The fourth round of twenty twenty seven. There's a couple of <laughs> running backs that maybe could be there. Um, yeah, but no, yeah. I can't I'm not gonna name any prospect to be going in the fourth round at this stage. They're all first round picks for now. Uh, until yeah. we see them on the field. Yeah, absolutely. We just we obviously just finished our I believe you run it as well, were you in the, I just finished the wildcard Devi draft. My my first ever Devi League and in, in some best ball, so I absolutely loved it. But yeah. Even even extensive research. Not not a lot of info about the 2027 fourth round coming up. Not yet, anyway. Maybe that's something you, you Devi guys could get ahead of the curve on, Jack. Be the first people to talk about 2027 sleepers. Yes. Yes, we will. <laughs> Although I hope, I hope that the people we're hyping up will not make it to the fourth. That maybe shows a, a yeah. discredit to our knowledge. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. see. I'll be... Yeah, hopefully people will have forgotten about it anyway if you don't. Win. But if you hit, you've got like it on tape as well. So you can just replay that and be like, see, I told you guys this whole time. Love it. <laughs> so that is the perfect pick there, Jack. Let's keep on going. Where are we going next? We've got three more to pick in round number two. Okay, I'm going to tick off number nine in the middle again. Yeah, let's keep this middle row going. Number nine. Hey, well, well, well. You find them. Look at that. We we talked about we wanted to get rid of that fourth round pick. We wanted to get rid of someone like Joe Milton. Jack, you got them both. Now, we 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 talked a bit about Joe Milton before this show, um, whenever you were on talking about rookie prospects. And I think we both agreed that Joe Milton was, you know, an absolute trap waiting to happen. What were your feelings when, when your Patriots took him? I was so confused. I didn't yeah. understand why we make that pick especially with the needs that we still have to address and probably still do need to address i've, I've heard all the press conferences in the aftermath talk about the value was just there he was not someone they were looking at but the value was too good which kind of makes sense if it wasn't a quarterback because i don't know what we're going to do with him like i don't think joe milton even at whatever value it was in the sixth round I don't think he's ever going to be a starter, so we're not going to trade him for anything profitable. So I, I don't understand it. But if we needed another body in the room, we need someone for social media clicks because he can throw fruit. Maybe that is what they were doing. The marketing department maybe made that decision. Yeah, it's it's an odd one. I had a slight fear that Joe Milton, because of his athletic ability and his profile and the way he can bomb at downfield, that people would have got carried away seeing him at the combine and I kind of tried to make sort of cheap Anthony Richardson comparisons. So I was kind of pleased to see how, you know, the dynasty and, and the Debbie community kind of went, no, like this is, yeah, people were were more up to date on on Joe Milton than than I perhaps given the community credit for. So that was that was nice to see that no one really bit the bullet on on Joe Milton and is already regretting that pick. But you never you know what? Maybe they're thinking give him give him three years and see see what happens. I think kind of like he's probably going to end up where Malik Willis is now, not gonna lie, but we'll see. Right. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Absolutely. So great pick. Two more picks left of this round. Jack, I'll give you the option if you want. You can do the one, two quick fire, but that's gone horribly for other people in the past. So I'll, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, no, let's do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sandwich Pirate Kill and tick off Garrett. Hoping this is not Garrett Wilson, but his new number five and the number seven on the other side. 
Let's go. Let's make a Tyreek Hill sandwich. Number five is Jalen Wright. Number seven is Mitch Trubisky. Hey. Oh, no. <laughs> that would have truly been a certified inferno if I'd been left with Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> Mitch Trubisky. Absolutely. But, I mean, Jalen Wright, I mean, let's... Nobody wants to hear anyone talk about Mitch Trubisky, right? He was just there because he's funny. <laughs> Jalen Wright, on the other hand, I think he is being... I know most people are finished their their drafts now, their rookie drafts, but for me, he was the biggest value in rookie drafts this year. I just I just love the value he got. Like, late second-round pick in some stages. Do you, do you like Jalen Wright as well? Yeah, I really do. I loved watching him in college, and I was going to say that late seconds. It felt like during rookie drafts, Jalen Wright's value was rising and rising, and he was never quite there at the right point for me, mainly because I've usually traded away all second and third round picks, so yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter where well, I was picking in the second, he wasn't. <laughs> but we've seen everyone and anyone succeed in the Miami running back room over yeah. the last few years with Mike McDaniel, and, and Jalen Wright has more talent than a lot of those backs that have gone on and scored points and and you know people like Raheem most have been an absolute league winner last season so Jalen Wright going in there maybe forcing himself into that backup role the RB2 role behind a Chan splitting time with uh the aforementioned most but he, he's gonna carve himself out a role he's an excellent pass catching back yeah, I think he's going to do do really really well, and he's like he's a bit of a a bit of a different back. I think I might be surprised if Raheem Mostert. I I don't know how many touchdowns Raheem Mostert got last year, but I'm pretty sure it was a hell of a lot. I wouldn't be shocked to see Jalen Wright come in and get a bit more goal line back. He's got a bit more like size about him, right? He seems like he can he can do that as well. So it'll be interesting to see how much goal line work. Jalen Wright gets so not an, not a great player to see coming off the board dynasty wise, but there's still so much on the board that you can't be too annoyed. And we got Mitch Trubisky as well, so I think we're going to get good offer from the banker, which I think will be coming through right now. Yes, hello. You were pleased about Brees Hall coming off the board, so that's interesting. But the rest of it was pretty solid. Yes, the banker does agree. The rest, Brees Hall was was a hit, but again. Josh Allen there still, and Garrett Wilson there as well. The banker's saying, a little bit scared. A little bit scared. So, that is interesting. This is the first, a first for the show, the banker says. Because you're a Debbie guy, you are being offered a high 2026 first. For this box, talk to me about the 2026 prospects if you can for a bit, Jack. And how valuable is a high first from those guys? Interesting. The value on a 2026 first is high, especially in a super flex league, because we are, as a community, pretty down at the moment on the 2025 quarterback class. Yeah. Now, that doesn't yeah. mean that the 2026 scene is that much clearer. But there will be quarterback needy teams, and we have some quarterbacks that are not ruined yet, like Nico Ayamaliva, who is at Tennessee, or Jackson Arnold, one of my favorite quarterbacks in that class, yeah. who has the reins at Oklahoma. You've also got my current favorite Ohio State wide receiver in Carnell Tate, who will be there, who's one of a bunch of you know, six, seven, eight really talented wide receivers in that class. So an early, a mid, a late 2026 first, I'm currently very excited about it. I'm, I'm very much all over those with the idea of taking some wide receivers. I think if you've if you've watched us on the uh, on the Debbie show, you'll know that Phil's the running back guy and I'm the wide receiver guy. <laughs> and I think we'd be very excited for the 25 running backs and the 26 yes. wide receivers. Yeah, and... 2026, Arch Arch Manning in there too, right? He's he's got some time to develop still, right? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, he seems to slip my mind because we've not seen much from him, but the hype is still there. He's very talented. Uh, we'll see. There's a chance that he would come out, but I think with just one year playing, maybe he'd do 
uh, a return, do do what a Mecca Book has done and come back to school for another year. But definitely, if he has an amazing year at Texas, then absolutely he'd be in that group. Can you imagine how much NIL money do you think Arch Manning's going to get when it comes right to it then? Like, that's going to be off the charts, surely, right? Yeah, but also, like, he's the guy that doesn't need it, isn't he? True. He's, he's yeah. <laughs> You know, he's in a position where money's not really a problem. He's making all these decisions for his career based on what is going to be best for him to get to the NFL. So money hasn't had to be a factor. He's chosen to like stay off social media and not do interviews until yeah. his sophomore season. And yeah, he's probably still going to get the biggest NIL offer. I mean, he's at Texas, so he's kind of decided to go somewhere where he's going to get a lot of money. But um, yeah. I think it's a side, side, a, a, a side bonus to his path to the NFL, which is what he's focused on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, a very interesting offer for the banker. First time a draft pick has ever been an offer. So, Jack, what's it going to be? Twenty twenty six early first for box number sixteen. Deal or no deal? I think with it being two years away, it's a no deal for me. It's a no deal as well. A banker, whoever the banker is, I say they're they're sweating about who's left on this board as we enter round number three. Jack, five more boxes to open. Where are we going first? Let's go. Let's finish off a row. Let's take number 10 off the board. But I am nervous about it. Nice. Let's, let's get 10 off the board. It's your guy, Javon baker he's seems to be a guy jack i've got a hell of a lot of shares of javon baker are you the same yeah me too anything in the th if he's in the third round and i've got a pick i i'm snapping javon baker mm -hmm. up. i mm -hmm. love the opportunity in a patriots wide receiver room which is it which is crowded but only for now it's crowded with a lot of players that have a chance to break out or haven't broken out in their two three years in the nfl or, or at the patriots so javon baker's attitude in particular really shines he feels like someone who absolutely believes in himself is astounded that he wasn't picked earlier by the nfl in the draft and is really betting on himself so i like the talent i like the opportunity and he's he's played pretty well in in preseason and one thing I really like from the, the last game, he dropped a deep pass for Drake May, which I think a lot of people who are kind of in touch with the dynasty scene will maybe have, have watched and thought he probably should have caught it. He took that clip and he posted it on his social media. He's using that as motivation to be like, wow, I've got to have this. And I love that mentality as well as having seen him play for UCF and, and make some big plays there. Yeah, I absolutely love the chance that Javon Baker's got. You're right. There's no, there's no like big superstar name there that that could like really lock in place that number one receiver role. And I, I don't know the full story, but Juju Smith Schuster just been released, right? Yeah, he's been cut, and I think that's kind of been coming for a few weeks. It's still quite crowded. He's the only one I think that's left. But um, yeah, no, no reason, no blocker. The Javon Baker being Drake May's number one receiver. Yeah, absolutely. And then Kendrick Bo Kendrick Bourne, he was someone I liked as well. He's on pop. He's injured. I don't know the severity of it. You might be able to talk about it a bit more. Yeah, he's on pop. I don't. I don't know the severity of the injury. Either. It doesn't seem to be too concerning. I think the yeah. Patriots expect him to be there pretty early in the season, if not ready for Week One. But yeah. the re receiver room is ticking along. The names that are, are popping off are. Javon Baker, Jalen Polk, and um, and Pop Douglas. They're the three that I'm hearing the most about at the moment. Young, yeah, exciting, fast wide receiver core. Yeah, that's that's got to be pretty exciting. So Baker, even though we're excited about him, still one of the lower valued players there. So we love seeing him coming off the board. In box number ten, there four more picks left. Jack, where are we going next? Okay, let's go with pick number seventeen. Let's go. Pick 17. That is Tua Tonga Vailoa. <laughs> is Tua the most disrespected quarterback in Superflex Dynasty Fantasy Football, Jack? 
right now, uh, quite possibly. Other than Mitch Trubisky, of course. We've already course. we've joked too much about him. <laughs> but yes, I think so. You look at his season last year and the way that he started was absolutely like ridiculous how yeah. well he was playing, the yardage he was putting up, the touchdowns. And if you reversed the season split, you know, it, it pretty much was halfway through the season. The first half was excellent, the second half was not as good as we all wanted. Yeah. If you split that the other way, and he's had the poor start, but the electric finish. How high is he being ranked in, in people's dynasty yeah. tiers this, for this season? So there's absolutely no reason for Tua not to be not to perform this year. So if you've got doubts about Tua as a as a quarterback, that might be fine. But his situation and the weapons around him and what he showed in that first half of the season. He's got no excuse, really, and I'm expecting a really good. Unf- unfortunately, all of these teams in the AFC East, other than the Patriots, <laughs> look like they're going to have a really exciting 2024 NFL season. Yeah, it does. It does look that way. Yeah, Tua is just a guy that, for whatever reason, I own quite a few Tua shares, and some leagues where I'm looking to like sell a quarterback or move him up. Tua is just some of the offers I get for Tua is just like sickening. Like even at times it's like can't even get like a first round pick from people are like now nah, I'm not going to pay a first for Tua. It's like I I don't understand it. I don't understand it. And then you can't. It's one of those plays you can't get it the other way around. Like I can't go out and offer a first for Tua and other leagues and get it accepted because people want way too much. He's one of the, he's one of those guys where it's just he's just not being transferred anywhere. Right? You notice that about him? Yeah, his value seems to be in that dead spot you can't trade him for anything you can't trade him away for anything fair but you can't buy him for anything fair either probably because of that super high ceiling he has and then if you're trying to sell him people are going to use the like concussion yeah concerns which I, you know he can't control there's no reason that that pattern will continue other than a lack of investment in the offensive line but People will talk themselves out of investing into her, I think, if they don't already own him. Yeah, yeah, I think he's he's a he's a real interesting player to green and, and to rank, and I'll be I can't wait to see where he will be this time next year. And Jack, we got three boxes left of round three. Where are we going next? Okay, let's take one from each row. So let's take number twenty. Number 20, that is, hey, it's Ramondre Stevenson, who's just signed a new contract with your Patriots. A lot of people talking up Ramondre at the minute. Are you, are you excited for what the future holds for him? I am semi-excited. I think the Patriots have benefited from a down year last season. I think the expectation for Ramondre Stevenson in 2023 was quite high on a volume basis he was you know the only running back really that people thought was gonna see many touches in the Patriots offense the offense as a whole wanted to run the ball a lot more and they did they just didn't do it very effectively or efficiently and (laughs) Ramondo Stevenson has signed this new contract I think on on the cheap I think the Patriots if they'd negotiated this one year ago would have been paying a lot more for him now Ezekiel Elliott is no longer at the Patriots. So Ramondo Stevenson has Antonio Gibson for company in that backfield. He's a very different kind of running back. So I think Stevenson's role is very secure. And again, is he a volume-based RB2 as a as a floor in a in an offense that probably is still going to run the ball quite a lot? And but be limited by the fact that the offense isn't going to be electric and therefore not scoring as many touchdowns as maybe you want to see out of a running back. It's, yeah, semi-excited. Yeah, I think he's he's priced quite nicely at the minute for Dynasty. Someone that I don't mind. If I'm on a contending team, Stevenson's a guy I'm going out to try and target because he's like a cheaper alternative to someone that you can just come in and have on your team and, and be happy about plugging him into your to your one of your flex spots or even running back to if you, if you really need him. So I, I think he's pretty good 
pretty good value right now in Dynasty. And yeah, not not a bad name to to get. So you said you're going to take one from each row. Which row are you going for next? The top one or the third one? Let's go for the top one and pick box number three. Uh, box number three. Oh, it's one of the big ones. It's Garrett Wilson. He's going to have a massive season, right? Oh, I can't wait. And that pains me a little bit because it's the Jets, but I can't <laughs> wait. Garrett Wilson is so much fun to watch as a wide receiver. His route running, his smoothness in and out of breaks, is just a joy to see. And I wish it was still in the scarlet and grey of Ohio State, but even in that that dirty bird green, I uh, I'll still I'll still enjoy watching him run run rings around defenders. Yeah, what what he's been able to do in the NFL, like he just, I mean, he's really mean. I know people complained about quarterback player for a lot of players, but I think Garrett Wilson has has a right to complain about the quarterbacks that he's had because I think that's the worst in the NFL over the last couple of years. So I can't wait to see him play with Aaron Rodgers, be the clear, clear, even though Alan Lazard is his friend, Garrett Wilson is the clear number one target there. I, I think he's in in for a real, real good season. And I mean, I talked about Drake London enough on this show, so I'll not really get into it too much. But with Garrett Wilson, I've seen I've seen him produce it and seen him do a lot more in his career than than maybe someone like like Drake. I think Wilson is just yeah, for me, he's he's kneeled on wide receiver one this year, all being well. So we didn't want to see him come off the board, Jack, unfortunately. But we do have one more pick. Let's let's redeem this a little bit. Who's left? Alan Lazard's still there. Let's get rid of that guy. Where's Alan Lazard hiding? Is he hiding behind number 14, please? Is Lazard behind 14? He is! Wow! That is fantastic. That's exactly what we needed. Alan Lazard the off the board. It, has anyone ever benefited more in the NFL out of being someone's friend than Alan Lazard has? Uh, maybe Mark has found his company for exactly the same uh, reason. Uh, yeah, um, I think you you might be right. It's it's like he's also a guy on waiver wires everywhere, and I kind of look at him and go, eh, and they go, nah, because he's just not he's not viable for Dynasty, is he? No, I don't think so. I think with the signing of uh, Mike Williams for the Jets, I think that kind of locks up that wide receiver two role. And it sounds like he's going to be healthy for the start of the season, which is good news. You've got Malachi Corley drafted in the third round, who's a really exciting wide receiver, gadgety kind of player. Who, again, I loved watching in college. He was a college fantasy football dream. Uh, top scorer, wide, top scoring wide receiver two years ago in a Western Kentucky offense that, um, yeah, it, we, we want to see more of. So I think Alan Lazard has dropped down that pecking order and, yeah, maybe he does literally have the contract because Rogers has asked for it. Yeah, I think I think you might be spot on. I think it's exactly what it is. It's because he's he's asked for him to be there, which is which is nothing, nothing new. So... Before we get the offer, I got to tell you, Jack. Here's who's still here, because there's a lot of heavy hitters. You still got a 2024 early first. You still got Hunter Henry is on there, and then it's all good from here. I, mean, I have to say, you got Drake May, Devon Achan, Dalton Kincaid. You got James Cook, and you still got Josh Allen as well. This is going to be a really, really good player behind box 16 so this offer from the banker is probably going to be really good too so let's find out what it is yes hello i would agree the banker is just saying this is the most impressive performance of the show to date jack and this is why the banker is prepared to offer you the highest valued player the banker has ever offered at any stage during the show. Because for box number 16, Jack, the banker is offering you 
Jonathan Taylor. A personal favourite. Ooh, wow. Tell tell me about Jonathan Taylor. He's going to have a big season next year. Finally, fully healthy and has a contract. Not much to complain about now. It's got to be wheels up, right? I think so. I think everything is aligning really well for the 2024 season for Jonathan Taylor to have Anthony Richardson back healthy as a passer and as a you know another running threat that takes away some of those stacked boxes that Jonathan Taylor might have seen otherwise. Uh, an offense that is yeah really looking to to take a step forward, even even without Anthony Richardson. They, they did pretty well at the back end of yeah. last season. Duncan Taylor hampered a little bit by injury, still put up some good numbers and still managed to get his contract, which, I, like you say, that's the important thing for Jonathan Taylor. He doesn't have to overstretch himself trying to put the statistics up in order to earn a contract. You know, when, when running backs are looking to do too much by themselves and that leads to mistakes, it leads to them reaching for the yeah. goal line and fumbling the ball or... Things like that. Jonathan Taylor's secure, his future is secure, and his role is pretty secure at the Colts. So, a really exciting 2024 season incoming. Obviously, the question with a player like Jonathan Taylor is it's, it's a running back on their second contract, and the value yeah. in Dynasty is only going one direction unless you're Christian McCaffrey. So, and I don't yeah. think Jonathan Taylor is going to live up to that standard as good as he is. Yeah, I think I think you're right about Taylor. He's got you know Max. What? Uh, well, he's got at least two years, right? You could probably get, you could probably get three years out of Jonathan Taylor. Still, he's he's one of those guys. But yeah, m- maybe not anything anything beyond that. So, with all that being said, Jonathan Taylor for box sixteen, deal or no deal? I am in it to win it. If I can clear Hunter Henry from yeah. the squad, I'll be happy. It's no deal. No deal for Jonathan Taylor. I say the banker is is praying that Josh Allen appears now. But even still, you could walk out with with players just as valuable. Somebody like a Devon Achan, not too much difference between him and Jonathan Taylor, dynasty ranking wise for me, certainly. And of course, Dalton Kincaid, the most valuable piece on the board still. So we got five boxes to open in the fourth and final round, Jack. Let's get, who do you say, Hunter Henry? Let's get him out of here right away. Let's go. Where are we going? I'm going to go box number 13 and hope it is lucky. Lucky number 13. It's Drake May. We'll take it, right? He's one of the lower valued ones, but Drake May preseason. I'm impressed. How are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, I can't say I've watched too much full games from from preseason, and I think Drake May mm-hmm. hasn't featured, I guess, in in a, even that larger proportion of the preseason games. Yeah. I believe he's likely to play the final preseason game and that'll be his chance to really win the job but Mm -hmm. definitely encouraged by the fact that this season started off as it wasn't a quarterback competition and Jacoby Brissett was going to be the starter to suddenly it is a real competition and Drake May has the chance to win it he's not just waiting on Brissett to slip up he's he's established himself as a contender for this job whether that's the right decision for him and his long-term future and the Patriots long-term future Let's see. I think um, having traded Judon this week kind of indicates that the Patriots are in a full rebuild for another season, if that makes sense. If you kept Judon around for a year, even if you didn't give him a contract, you're kind of saying, okay, this is, we're going to build on it. We're going to use this as a springboard. And trading him away maybe indicates the Patriots aren't quite there yet. So, how much of Drake May we'll see in this season, I'm not sure. But I think either way, his value is going to increase in a year's time, whether he's played a snap or not, because yeah. he's, he's ranked pretty low in, in Dynasty startups right now. Yeah, it's a weird one to decide. Like, do you let players sit? Do you put them in right away? Because we've seen players succeed by sitting. Like, obviously, Patrick Mahomes, the most famous example. 
but we've also seen players succeed just by being thrown in at the deep end, like kind of like Justin Herbert was just kind of thrown in at the deep end whenever you know Tyrone Taylor's own medical team stabbed him in the lung, which was always a fun story to cover. You know, so it could go either way for Jake May. I personally just like let the kid play, throw him in. I mean, if you're a Patriots fan, surely Jack, you're not clamoring to see Jacoby Brissett play week one, are you? Or maybe you are, I don't know. <laughs> no, as a fan, no. it's like a nostalgia <laughs> around it because he obviously <laughs> wasn't before, and he, for Patriots fans, he plugged that gap when Tom Brady had his four game suspension, and then Garoppolo got injured in game two, and Brissett yeah. lost the two, two starts. So there's a bit of nostalgia around him. He's a fun guy. He's very level-headed so he's someone that i love being around that i like hearing from but no he's, he's not someone that's going to uh put the patriots at the top of the uh highlights reel if that makes sense if this were match of the day jacoby brissett is not putting us on as the headline show. yeah jacoby's going on last just the yeah absolutely so we got drake may off the board there that is good because it's not one of the heavy heavy headers so who do we want next? We want Hunter Henry next, right? Let, let's see if we can find him. Where are you going? I'm going to go and leave my box 16 on its own. So let's take out 15 in that row. Let's take out box 15. Oh, it's Dalton Kid Kid, who again, it's not Josh Allen. So again, we're, we're happy. Jack, I love me some Dalton Kid Kid. Do you, hey, I just cannot see a world where he doesn't have a huge, huge season here. I think he's going to be tight end one. Like that's that's how high a season I think he's going to have. Yeah, I think he's a talent that kind of came out of nowhere. From a Debbie perspective, he was kind of off the radar until his final year in college. I mean, he was okay. He was off my radar. Maybe they're a better Debbie analyst than than hmm. I. But he absolutely exploded in his final year at college and has all the tools and chemistry with Josh Allen to be the tight end one like you say and that's not just because he can his secure hands for short intermediate dump offs or over the middle which he is he's very strong very physical could box out a defender very easily but he's also got the athleticism and the yeah. speed to, to win deeper down the field and then evade defenders who are who are trying to take an angle on him so yeah he's got the the stereotypical quote of he's got the full picture he's got every trick in the box as a tight end everything you really want from a well-rounded modern tight end prospect because that let's be honest the tight end position has changed so much in the last yeah. six seven years and it's it's if you were building the prototype tight end for today's nfl you're looking at someone like dalton kincaid yeah i absolutely agree i think he's he's just primed to to come out and and really challenge Sam Laporta even for that dynasty tight end one overall, you know, midway through the season as well. I think he'd be, he'll be right up there. So I love me some Dalton Kincaid. But for this game, that's fine. It's not Josh Allen. That's that's the eye in the prize right now, Jack, for sure. So where are we going to go next? That pesky Hunter Henry still lingering around like a bad smell. Yeah, he is. He really is. Let's go with box number four. Box number four is... Oh, my Three goodness. Times. You got him. You got okay. him. Hunter Henry off the board. No disrespect to Hunter Henry, right? He's he's a, he's a another underappreciated dynasty. Uh, maybe asset's a strong word, but he's not a bad guy to have on your roster, right? No, and, you know, if you play in a league that has tight ends, you need a tight end. He's someone that can fill in a job at a position that is very volatile. And like you say, the, yeah. the margins between tight end 10 and tight end 30 are, are pretty minuscule. And Hunter Hendry comes at that tight end, I don't know, 25 cost. So, yes, he's certainly outside your top 100 picks. So an asset, definitely. If you're waiting on tight end, if you're not taking an early one, like your Kincaid's, like your McBride's or Laporta, then Hunter yeah. Henry's a, you know, I'd, I'm of the opinion that you punt the position all the way if you're not taking one of those top ones. 
and and yeah. grab three or four, and he's definitely one that I would take. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. And we got four boxes left. We got your box number sixteen. We've got whatever the last box is going to be that we'll get to in a minute. But we've got two more to open this round. And Jack, the good news is you're going to end up here with Josh Allen, with James Cook, with Devon Achan, or with a high 2024 first round pick, or whatever the last offer is from the banker. So we're looking good no matter where we go here, Jack. You're going to end up with, I think, the best the best result that the show has seen so far. So I could say you could relax a bit, but I know you still got your eye on the top prize here. So where are we going next? Yeah, uh, it really is crunch time, isn't it? I'm going to go with pick with box number 19 and try and find James Cook. Box number 19, it's Devon Echan, which again, not Josh Allen, so we're pretty happy. Man, Echan, I, I, I love this guy. I can't get enough. I love watching him play. It's like he's on fast forward. It is amazing to watch him run, right? Yeah, he is. I've said electric maybe too many times this evening, but he is electric. <laughs> isn't yeah, he? he is. He is a terrifying prospect to me because everything about my evaluation pro- process says that he's not someone that I should invest in because <laughs> of his size, uh, in particular. But he's shown on the field that he that that doesn't matter. That he is yeah. an elite running back for your NFL team. For your, for your well, yeah, for your NFL team, for your dynasty team, he's proven he can do it, and he's just so much fun to watch. And the the Dolphins are so much fun to watch. And we spoke yeah. about that running back room and how it's set up for success, and you can plug players in. But a Chan is is a talent on top of on top of being in the system. He's got the talent. How how highly do you have him? Like in your in your overall sort of sort of dynasty ranks, I sort of mentioned Jonathan Taylor earlier. Echan's right around that that area for me. He's he's that good, even though we have seen injuries out of him. I just I just think when he's healthy and on the field, he's so good. Yeah, he is. His, his ADP is around running back eight at the moment, and I think I probably have him about there. I've just yeah, I've just snagged him in a redraft league as my anchor running back. So. You know, taking him in the third round, and I will then wait. And I'm quite happy with with that, having him as my lead running back. Yeah, I think I've got a bit of a value there in the third round of a of a redraft league because I think he he could go nuclear this season. I think the Dolphins overall could go nuclear. So yeah, he's someone I'm definitely looking for. And and like you say, with you know, Jonathan Taylor, the the counter to Jonathan Taylor in terms of Devon Achan is the age and uh, freshness in the legs, which Jonathan Taylor maybe doesn't have. He played a like, Jonathan Taylor had a lot of usage in college as well as since he's come to the yeah. league. So, yeah, they're really that's a really finely tipped balance between Taylor and Echan. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Echan coming off the board, that's the third pick in this round. Sorry, that's the fourth pick, is it? Yes, fourth pick. One more box to open. It's going to be James Cook. It's going to be a 2024 first, or it's going to be Josh Allen. Let's not have it be Josh Allen. Where are we going? Let's take off the lower hanging fruit. Pick number, box number two. Box number two is James Cook. You did it. Yes. Woo, James Cook coming off the board. He had a great season last year. But a lot of people sort of questioning, can he do it again? Where, where are you sitting on the James Cook fence here, Jack? I I have a lot of James Cook because of that strategy of kind of punting, running back in those, you know, well, really, when I'm playing Dynasty, I tend to punt running back altogether and, and end up with a yeah. lot of heavy wide receiver bills and James Cook is has been before this season has been you know a, a 10th 11th round pickup because it, he wasn't a superstar but last year like you say he, he really took hold of that lead back role in Buffalo and his value has increased 
incredibly in the last year. So I'm very glad I have a lot of him. I yeah. uh, think again this season he's got very little, you know, three down back challenge I, I i have to say i do love ray davis who the bills have drafted but i don't think ray davis is gonna take over a three down back role he's a he's a great running back he's a huge running back so he's gonna be a short yardage kind of guy but i don't think that really impacts james cook especially james cook receiving ability and the chemistry that he's built up with josh allen with Stefan Diggs go in and Gabe Davis go in, you know, the reliable, consistent targets are going to be Cook, Kincaid. Well, yeah, just those two. They're the only two. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, really like him, really value having him on a lot of my rosters. And that, you know, that really came to fruition in, in 2023. Yeah, absolutely for sure. And you're set up so nicely here, Jack, because there are two picks left. One of them is an early 2024 first, which is, you know, Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., that kind of player. The other is, you know, for many people, dynasty player number one overall in Josh Allen. This offer is going to be it has to be very good, right? It's It's got to be the best offer we've ever seen on the show from the banker. The banker says he doesn't want to talk to you. He's too annoyed. The offer's Jalen Hurts. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you think? Jalen Hurts? That's good, right? But he hung up at me right away. He sounded angry. He sounded real angry about, about being bested here. <laughs> well, Jalen Hurts is... Well, yeah, like you say, that is the biggest offer the bankers offer sent out. So, you know, it's not many times I get up on the bankers. So, very happy to see them squirming, whoever they may be. <laughs> yeah, yeah Jalen Hurts. Yeah, what do you think about him this year? I mean, I might be naive to this, and this might sound insensitive. A lot of people are saying that the tush push is going to become irrelevant because Jason Kelsey isn't there, and in the nicest way possible, he's only a center. It'll be fine. It's yeah, I, <laughs> my concern about Hertz's touchdowns is not heightened really by the fact that Kelsey's gone. My yeah. uh, love for the NFL and and joy and entertainment is slightly tarnished by the fact that Jason Kelsey's not there anymore, but I'm sure yes. we're going to see lots of him on the sidelines and through his podcast, so I don't need to worry oh, too yeah. much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think Hertz is still going to be taking those goal line carries across. I, I think the system rather than the centre is what made the push yeah. so valuable. You know, there's yeah. there's 10 other players on the field when the push push is in action, and it was never a surprise, was it? We knew Nobody was surprised when the two scripts call was played. We knew what was coming, and defences yeah. could still get stop it. Yeah, and one of those players is Jordan Mailata, who I think has a lot to do with it as well, who's still who's still going to be there. So, yeah, I've got no fears about regression for, for that with, with Hertz, which obviously makes his dynasty value so huge, which makes this a tough choice for you, Jack, because you could get that number one prize in Josh Allen, or you could kind of you know, hedge your bets a bit, take Jill and Hurts. And I mean, it's, it's hardly like it's bad if you end up with the 24 early first either. So, so Jack, I think I know what you're going to say. Jill and Hurts, deal or no deal? Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say because it, it sits right in between it does. the value there. But my, you know, my homerism says Marvin Harrison Jr. is available with that early yeah. 2024 first. And, and obviously, Caleb Williams has all the superstar potential but we've not seen it in the nfl when when does my pick get judged how, how long do i have to yeah. I get to go or uh, have to hide away um but no i said i'm i'm here for the ride i'm gonna say no deal and i think i'll be happy with whatever comes out of this box exactly i think i thought that's what you were going to say um, before we open up the final box jack are you going to take me up on one final offer? Would you like to swap 
box 16 and open box 21 instead. See, now I'm overthinking the board and looking at where the, and I know it's randomized, but you know, when yeah. you, you still think there's two quarterbacks on that row of 16. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not the game. That's not, that's not trusting, that's not trusting my JT Barrett. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with box number 16. Right. Let's stick with box number 16. And let's open it now. And you win regardless, Jack. But I want to see Josh Allen come out here. That would be amazing. Box 16 is... You did it! <laughs> Round of applause. Oh for Jack. Josh Allen. You win the game. Mate. That's the number one prize in, in, in the whole show, right? Of all, all the divisions <laughs> we can do. Josh Allen is is most people's dynasty player one overall. You gotta be thrilled, right? Yeah, absolutely delighted. I don't uh, didn't let myself believe it would it would it would happen. I was I was thinking about Marvin Harrison all day long. Then absolutely, yeah. And, and and Josh Allen comes out. I mean, do we? <laughs> the thing is about Josh Allen, he's so good. You almost don't need to talk about him at all. I mean, is is there anything people? I know some people are worried about him losing digs. I'm not worried about Josh Allen at all. He's probably going to be quarterback one again this year, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, why would we be worried about him losing digs when we've now just had a whole off season where digs has been beaten down and beaten down? So if he wasn't that good anyway, yeah. what what does it matter losing him? And yeah, I think Josh Allen is. Uh, wide receiver proof well that's not you know that's not yeah that's not it but he's gonna score points no matter what yeah absolutely he's gonna smash it and just to show there we go it's the 20 oh it was 2025 i do apologize we we had spoken before the show i was like i should have made it 2025 I actually did but i would have i would have given the 24 if i come up just to let you know because i was t saying the whole time but good to know i was i was thinking about that too so you walk out of here jack with josh allen really showing people how this game is done people will be talking about this for years and years to come i'm sure so jack do you just want to remind the people before you go where can they find all your amazing work online yeah you can find all of my work at the fantasy wildcard debbie show uh, on x and on the fantasy wildcard uh x and youtube channel i do have a you know the, you can see my own handle there but it's most of our work is on is on that fancy debbie wildcard handle yeah absolutely make sure you're following the wildcard debbie team especially college football just around the corner as well so i'm sure you guys have got tons of amazing content coming out for when the season fully gets up and running so Thank you, Jack, once again for coming onto the show. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Hey, if you're not already, hit that thumbs up and that subscribe button as well. If you're listening on audio as well, a five star or a thumbs up, whatever the hell you're listening on, just, just say something nice, right? That'll be, that'll be absolutely lovely. So, from me and from Jack, what a phenomenal performance. Absolutely loved it. That's why the Dynasty Hot Seat. What an experience it is. A certified inferno for sure. So, guys, remember, for anything dynasty, you need to know. Keep it locked right here on the certified inferno. I will see you very soon.